G'day and welcome to Cloud Cartographer. So uh, Kubernetes 1.5 dropped in early December last year. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. I uh, hope you had a great holiday period and got a little bit of time to rest and recuperate, especially all you open source folks working on Kubernetes. Uh, so back to 1.5. Uh, so 1.5 dropped um, something in there called stateful set. So I'm not going to do it justice. I'm only going to keep this to about five minutes. But um, Kubernetes is well known for running stateless apps. But what happens if you want to run stateful apps on top of Kubernetes? So uh, in 1.4, uh, the pet set API was introduced, uh, which was set out to achieve uh, solving uh Stateful, uh, stateful applications and stateful workloads. Uh, so in 1.5, it became a beta API, and it's now known as Stateful Set. It got renamed. So don't worry about that too much. Let's just worry about what this thing can do. Uh, so Stateful Set gives you the controller gives you a couple of things. It gives you uh, a stable network ID in the form of a DNS name. Uh, it gives you an ordinal index, uh, so zero through n. Um, if anybody's used any of the Apache, Zookeeper, Cassandra, you know, you would assign that I am zero of n number in this cluster. Um, and it also gives you um, persistent storage, so you can actually attach storage. So what I was going to do is just spend a couple of minutes. I'm not going to be able to get through it all. The documentation online is absolutely rock solid, um, so I urge you to go there if you're interested in taking a look. Um, but I wanted to go through a quick demo here. Um, and as you can see here, we have the stateful set basics. And if you really uh, want to get into it, there's a really rock solid um, zookeeper example here. Um, but today I'm going to just use Helm to lay down console. Um, and if you're interested in laying down console yourself using the stateful set, uh, this can be found in the Kubernetes charts repository. And you can use Helm to install it, which is what I'm going to demo here right now. Okay, so. I'm going to use Helm to install this thing, um, and I have the chart on my uh, machine at the moment, so I'm going to install from directory and give it a name, uh, console, and I'm going to put it in a namespace called console new for now. Okay, so that's deployed console in that namespace. If we go and take a look, we'll wait for this to come up, and we'll see a few things here. So we actually give a stateful set name as part of the definition inside the manifest. Um, so that's why you see console and then obviously the pod name console zero um, and that's that ordinal index I spoke of. So now zero's come up, um, one is coming up. Now what you'll notice is they're actually ordered. So they'll come up in sequential order, zero, one, two, so on and so forth. And if you were to uh, delete them or take them down, they do the reverse. So there's a bunch of features like that. Um, obviously, when you're bringing up systems that are stateful, they want to come up in a specific order. Um, so this is coming up right now. Um, the other thing that is interesting here, if we do a, a kubectl get pvc in the namespace, I think I called it console new. You see I have three pvcs. So as part of this template, I'll pull it up in a second, um, I have uh, a persistent volume claim which is getting matched against a storage class and delivering, um, in this case, I'm on AWS and EBS volume. Um, so if I show uh, PVs as well, you should see the actual EBS volumes here. Okay, so I have, I've been playing with this for a while, but here's the one for one minute. So these are actually live um, EBS volumes on AWS attached to each of the nodes um, that's running this cluster. Now I had some notes here as part of the Helm chart, so you can actually just go in and test that this is up and running. We should, it's going to run a console members and show that I actually have a three node cluster here up and running. So I have three nodes. They've been able to uh, be brought up. They know about each other given the names, um, the stable service names as part of the service discovery and what stateful sets is providing. And I've actually got the data um, in a persistent volume, an EBS volume in this case. So this was just a very short, quick demo. I could scale this up. So I could go in and actually say I want more than three. Um, I could scale it down. And there are some really interesting use cases um, when you go into the Zookeeper one about uh, pod disruption bu budgets and using any affinity. So you can actually do, say, how many of these can be moved or changed at a time. Um, 
but that's a good place to get started. Just finally before I go here, let's just pop over. Um, here's actually the rendered set of templates um, that were submitted to Kubernetes. Now a couple of things I wanted to show you. So you see the volume claim template is actually embedded inside the, um, the stateful set um, resource manifest. And I've said, you know, I've given it a name. There's an annotation here that's asking for the storage class, which is default. Um, the storage class defines uh, uh, the, pro the provisioner, in, this, in which case it's EBS. Um, I'm asking for a one gig volume. The other thing I would like to show here is the stateful set service name console dash console that's so that's just something that I've said at the moment but just to give you an idea um, of where that service name comes from so if you're interested in running um, stateful workloads stateful sets may, might be for you if you have some uh, more in-depth knowledge application runtime knowledge um, that needs to be embedded a little bit more knowledge you might want to look at the operator model by the core OS guys um, but that's all I wanted to show you. Be excited. Um, stateful sets is a good thing. Um, and I'm excited to see some, some great charts come out of this uh, for things like Zookeeper, um, etcd, uh, console, for example. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for joining. Cheers.